I'd like to call to order the October 16, 2012 meeting of the Planning Board of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. The first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, June 19, 2012. Does anyone have any questions or comments on the minutes? Make a motion to approve. Please. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. The first substantive, substantive item is a consent agenda item, Golden Ridge Subdivision Approval Extension Request. Because this is a consent agenda item, um, we do not have any discussion of the item. If anyone feels that the item needs discussion, we will have to move it off of the consent agenda. Golden Ridge LLC is requesting a 90-day extension of the approval previously granted by the Planning Board in accordance with Section 1624F of the Subdivision Ordinance. Can the applicant make a presentation or should we not do that? The applicant is here to answer questions if you have questions for him. Okay, and if we have questions, we then would need to move it off of this agenda? No, just, just to, you know, have a conversation with him. Yeah, you can just do this. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? No? Would anyone like to make a motion? Henry? The adornment of the case on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the request for Golden Ridge Lane LLC for a 90-day extension of the subdivision approval of the Golden Ridge subdivision located at the end of Golden Ridge Lane is granted with a new expiration date on January 14, 2013. Do I have a second? Second. Second. I think Carol says, said it first. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, Rudy's Site Plan Amendment, 517 Ocean House LLC is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan to add a basement and convert the second sto floor storage space to an apartment, section 1996, site plan amendment. And I would add also to, um, is requesting a one year extension of the site plan approval. So if you would like to introduce yourself and sure. explain. My name is uh, Patrick Carroll, I'm with Carroll Associates and I'm here tonight representing Paul Woods and 517 Ocean House LLC. Um, I know back in December we received our site plan approval uh, from the board and since then we've been working pretty diligently on uh, refining the site plan, the refining the building plans and uh, getting ready to kind of break ground and start construction on the new Rudy's. Um, as a result of kind of refining of the building plans itself, uh, we've, we came to the conclusion that um, Originally, if you remember back, the, there was a, there's a first floor which, with the 80 seats. There was a second floor that was going to contain an office and some storage. And we started looking at, uh, looking at how that was really going to work and determined that um, if we could add a basement to the project, basement to the plan, uh, that we could accommodate the, the storage uh, requirements for the restaurant much easier and cleaner than, than the upstairs and that freed up the upstairs for another use and so we we are now proposing to uh, take the basement or take the the building footprint add a basement to the lower level and add and uh, add the add a apartment to the upper floor so um, that's why we're here tonight is um, basically it's kind of a minor change in use from what was originally approved originally it was just a a uh, 80 seat restaurant with uh, upstairs storage and office. Now it's an 80 seat restaurant with a small one bedroom apartment on the second floor. Uh, the site plan is essentially the same. Uh, we did have to raise the grades and adjust the grades one foot in order to accommodate the, um, the <coughs> basement in order to get drainage out of the basement, foundation drains and so forth. So we had to raise the building a foot uh, the site has been slightly graded to accommodate that foot and grade change. However, all the grading 
is back down to where it was at the approved level by the time it gets to the, to the um, property line. So uh, we're not expanding or creating uh, grading beyond what was originally approved, and all the grading fits within the, uh, the property boundaries themselves. So I'd be glad to go through that with you if you'd like. Um, we do have, um, let me see if I can... Get to maybe I can't. This is actually the uh, the grading plan, and oops, I'm sorry, I'm kind of. I had this problem last time too. Um, the original, the original uh, footprint, the original proposed plan had a finished floor elevation of 75, and we have raised that to, to 76 here. So the finished floor now is at 76. There's a basement floor that's at down at elevation 67. So it's a nine foot uh, floor to floor relationship uh, that gives us an eight foot ceiling in there. The basement is really proposed, uh, that's where the coolers are going to be, um, st storage for, uh, you know, condiments and uh, napkins and, and those types of elements would all be down in the, in the basement area. There is a, a direct access um, from, the, from the service area here into a stairwell that drops right down into the basement level. Um, the access for the upstairs apartment actually occurs. Um, there's a sidewalk that comes in here, and there's a doorway on the north side of the building that runs into a stair that overlaps the stair going to the basement. This goes up to the second floor. Um, but again, all of the grades themselves have been um, adjusted such that um, the grading does not encroach beyond what was originally approved. Uh, the, the parking, we're, we're keeping the same number of parking spaces. We're anticipating that, uh, you know, we, we exceed the ordinance requirement for parking, and we anticipate that the parking for the apartment would be a shared use with the restaurant parking. So we don't see an issue with, with parking. The landscape plan was just barely modified. It was modified primarily in this zone right here, this little landscape area here. Had to be modified in order to, to when we raised the grade, we had to bring a ramp into here in order to, to make this uh, accessible by ADA requirements. So uh, we, this, this area in here was slightly tweaked. Um, we've adjusted kind of a number of shrubs in here and created a a sidewalk that comes up this way, kind of ramping up to the uh, to the doorway. That's the only change in the um, in the landscape plan. We submitted here. This is. Um, This is the basement level of the building, and you can see it's, um, it's primarily just a wide open space. You can see the stairwell on the right-hand side that comes down from, from um, the service area in the back comes down. Um, it's, it's not the entire footprint of the building. Uh, this is where there's a screen porch, a seasonal porch in the front, and this is kind of the, uh, the arrival covered porch area for the for the main entrance in. So uh, the basement area really comprises about, probably about 80% uh, of the existing footprint. Again, the, the, the footprint that was approved hasn't been changed or modified. Uh, that square footage itself was, uh, was maintained. So we're not asking for an increase in size of the building, size of the footprint.
Is that the furnace? <laughs> I hope so. We'd be worried. It would be better than an earthquake. Maybe we should check and see. No, you think you can change Who's going? <laughs> Um, it's what? <laughs> Is it gas or oil? Oh, and should we check with the fire department and have someone take a look just in case that was the furnace and not an earthquake? <laughs> what if you put a call into the fire department just in case? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is, this is the first floor plan here. Um, so it shows a series of, uh, this is the entrance off of uh, Route, 80, Route uh, 77, I'm sorry. Um, here, uh, this is the, the, the other primary entrance from the parking lot is here. This is all a covered kind of porch area where waiting and so forth could occur, queuing. Um, so you come in, there's a, there's a seasonal porch here, and then this is the kind of the, the main dining area, a series of booths, a series of tables. This is the bar area with a series of stools. So there's a total of 80 seats in the restaurant here. Um, this is the door to the service area. This is where service trucks will back up in here, and this is where uh, supplies will come into the kitchen area or go straight down to the basement level. And then on the outside, this is the door that goes up to the upstairs apartment. We'll let you finish there. Before you finish, can you explain the one-year extension request? Well, the one-year extension request is the fact that uh, the, the current permit expires in December. Right. And um, Mr. Woods has all intentions to uh, begin this project as soon as possible. I think we're looking at uh, perhaps um, sometime around the 1st of November securing a demolition permit. Um, and then once the, once the building is down, then um, grading and, and prepping for the new building will occur. Um, his concern is one of weather. And, you know, if we get into getting the building down and all of a sudden November is just a really, really bad month, um, he may decide to kind of hold off until spring. So um, given that the permit expires in December, that's just kind of cutting it too close and the thought was that, um, and we talked to Maureen, and she suggested that, uh, that a one-year extension uh, would be appropriate. Okay. Now, we are going to open the floor to public comment, but before we do that, does anyone have questions clarifying questions? Yeah, I just, just have a simple one. Um, where's the ground, where is the water table in respect to the basement? How high up is the water table? Is it below the basement, halfway up the basement? Uh, we're not sure, but, um, you know, we have... Uh, we have Skip Murray is going is hired as the site contractor. Skip has taken a look at the site. He feels pretty confident that um, that he can we can put a basement in here. And Skip's done a lot of work all over town for years and years. Um, I know there is an adjacent wetland off to the south, and our um, foundation drains. Our basement is actually higher than any any of the wetland areas that are mapped on the uh, on that adjacent yeah, property so. sorry in the broad cove area a couple of years ago almost every house down there their basements were flooded and so you know i would have thought that just that maybe we'd know where the water table was so, so again we do have uh, proposed foundation drains that will that will drain positively drain out to the south and um we believe they're they're draining and they're daylighting at an elevation higher than what the uh, what the wetland elevation is. So, um, you know, without without digging a ten foot test pit out there, it's it's rather difficult at this point to tell. If you're storing provisions down there and it gets damp, I mean, it was just just uh, wondering what the what the depth of the water table was. <clears throat> Any other questions? I think our first decision is whether we have adequate information tonight, but we, questions may help. Um, is the adjacent building also going to have a basement? Uh, the adjacent building is part of phase two, and uh, that really hasn't been designed yet. Okay. 
Um, you know, right now, I mean, I think the way that both buildings were originally approved, they were both approved as a slab on grade. So um, I guess until that building um, gets designed and ready to be built, I, you know, I, I can't really anticipate what it's going to be. Okay, and then is there any uh, thought of putting a bulkhead into the building, or is the, are you going to just have that one access? I think right now we've, we've looked at codes, and we don't need a secondary access out of the basement uh, for, to meet code. Uh, we did look originally at putting a bulkhead in, and the feeling was that the access in and through the kitchen to the basement was functioned much better from the restaurant point of view. Um, and so that's kind of why we went with that. So there's no, there's no uh, design right now to put a bulkhead, a separate bulkhead in. Can you comment on the town engineer's um, two comments about the potential for ponding in front of the building? Yeah. Th and then the uh, sure. between the two buildings. Um, I think both of those are really a result of uh, just some, some uh, typos in, in our grading plan. I think they were, the spot elevation that was shown there was based on when the, when the building was a foot lower. It wasn't really caught. And so when we raised it up, that spot elevation naturally ended up being lower than what everything around it was. And so that's what he was picking up on. And the same thing between the buildings. Um, you know, we're, we're, we fully anticipate to take another look at that and uh, add some spot grades in there to make sure that we've got good drainage. Great. Anyone else have preliminary questions, comments? I, I only had one. Because um, of the zone we're in here, we do take a look at the exterior of the building as part of our site plan approval. Is there any change, other than the raising of the elevation, any other exterior changes in design? Are there additional windows, anything else that's happening? No, and you know, we did originally propose to submit those, those elevation drawings to the town. And in discussions with Maureen, she felt like there were, weren't enough changes to those. I mean, they're just refinements, basically. But the basic elevations that were approved um, are being kind of just refined and tweaked. And I mean, that's, that's really the massing and the materials and the fenestration and all of that is, is very consistent with what It's the same as what we had yes. previously seen. Yes. So she didn't feel like we needed to submit those. And that's why they weren't part of your package. Uh, at this point, if there's any member of the public that would like to comment, please come forward. We have received a couple of emails from neighbors, and we've all read those. But if anyone else has comments, please feel free to come forward to the podium. <coughs> Seeing no one, public comment period is closed. And I'll open it back up to planning board members for any further questions, comments. Victoria. Just a comment. When I was... Um Looking at the plans, I noticed that number four on um, the first page, one, uh, mm -hmm. it still reads about um, outdoor dining for a total. Of, I mean, it still reads the old way. So when you do update this, it should probably be updated as uh, condition number seven from our December meeting. And um, I forgot to bring it with me, but it says something to the effect of the proposed use for phase one is a... Um, well, now it's going to be an apartment in a 80-seat restaurant, and the proposed use for phase two is a village retail shop. But that was, um, so it's number four here on this page, mm -hmm. number one. If you go back to look at condition number seven from our meeting, you'll see that as a condition, the wording was supposed to be updated. So when you go back. Okay. I think I did update this, but I didn't look back at that condition because we weren't trying to meet all the conditions with this plan yet. That's right. really the next step in submitting everything for building permits is to make sure all those conditions are met. But we did update that to include um, the rental apartment in there. Yes, but, I saw but I, that. I understand right. where you're coming from, and I appreciate that comment. Just FYI. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? Do I understand you that you're not going to have a designated parking space for the tenant? Is the tenant going to have a space that they can 
rely on remaining available should they come home late at night? That is something that yeah, it hasn't been discussed, me. but um, you know that that could be accommodated pretty easily. Again, I think you know we're um, we're at 39 spaces and the zoning requirements for 31. So, I mean, clearly we could designate a space uh, for for the tenant. I'm just based on the neighbors' comments that we had at prior meetings about, you know, the expectation and that this is going to be pretty full. I would think that if we were having a residential tenant coming home late, and we're, we need to accommodate them in this lot, I think we should have a designated space. Does anybody else have thoughts on that? So I don't agree. You don't agree? No. I think that's something that the tenant could negotiate with the landlord if it's a problem, but I think it's more efficient if people just pool the spaces for joint use from operational perspective. Makes more sense. Anyone pool else? Inventory, random demand. I, I guess my concern is that usage wise, we need to conclude that there's adequate parking for the combined use, and I'm concerned that a tenant coming home late on a Saturday night will not have parking. Um, and, and to me, that's not a landlord-tenant issue, that's a planning issue. Yeah, I, I think that there's, um, in our ordinance, the concept of pooled parking, and right. there's sort of an efficiency reason behind that. But there's also a requirement fits that, into that there tenant. is parking for the residential use. I don't know. Maureen, do you have a thought on that? On parking? Yeah. I'm, no, my, <laughs> no, my concern was that given the expectation that particularly on high use times, this parking lot will be completely full, it seemed to me that the tenant should have a space. Otherwise, it would not be unlikely that a tenant would come home during a busy restaurant time and not have a place to park. I believe that there's 25 spaces on the property. 39. 39 parking spaces for an 80-seat restaurant, which would mean that the, the parking requirement in your ordinance is 20 spaces. So right. even if there isn't shared parking with the apartment, that means that the total required parking would be 22 spaces, plus the parking for the phase two building. So the applicant still has enough parking for the whole project without going with the shared parking. And remember, some of that 39 spaces was for the phase two building. Right. And that is a building that we would expect would be more of an office space building that would be closed nights and weekends when it could share parking with the apartment. So when we compare the total required, which is 51. 31, 31 required. And, and again, that's for both buildings, both phases. Yeah, okay. So your sense is that we shouldn't designate a residential space or that we don't have the authority to do No, that? I, I mean, we've, the planning board has, has gone through this issue several times on several different lots. And you have repeatedly approved shared parking and we have yet to have a problem in those situations. So, um, you know, I think if you were even to designate one space that's supposed to be a resident only space, it, it wouldn't be something you would need to do. Every time you've approved shared parking with residents and business, we've never had someone come back and say, oh, I couldn't get into my parking space. Or if you're trying to do shared parking, you're, you're, the whole idea is to pool, pool your, your resources and so you can use them more efficiently rather than paving more space. So right. why set aside a space just for a resident that may only need it on nights and weekends? Because the neighbors, because a resident has no choice but to put their car here? No, they, the resident the, has a, a resident can put their car on the street just like anyone else could put their car on the street. Right, but the neighbors were quite concerned about yep. cars on the street, so it seemed to me that as a planning matter, we would want to make sure that a resident who has to be there as opposed to a patron would have a space to park. But if others don't agree, that's fine. I don't feel strongly one way or the other. <laughs> okay, no comment. We'll let you decide it as you wish. Okay. Should we make a motion? 
Make a motion. Okay. Um, the planning board granted the following <coughs> approval at the December 20, 2011 meeting. Is that, am I reading the right thing? Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of 517 Ocean House Road, LLC, for site plan review and a resource protection permit to construct an 80-seat restaurant and a second 1,240-square-foot retail building, including 2,502 square feet of wetland alteration to construct a sidewalk in the Business A District located at 517 Ocean House Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. The main building was proposed for construction on a slab. The second floor space was designated as storage. The applicant is now proposing to construct a basement for the building and to use the second floor space as an apartment. No footprint changes are proposed. The basement will raise the building one foot, resulting in adjustments to the site grading. The new grading will not change the grades of the property line that were originally approved. Site plan approval is valid for one year and will expire this December. The applicant is also requesting a one-year extension of the site plan approval. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of 517 Ocean House Road, LLC, for an amendment to the previously approved Rudy's of the Cape site plan to add a basement, change the use of the second floor from storage to an apartment and related grade changes, and the extension of one year of the original approval plus amendments for a new expiration date of October 16, 2013, be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised for the town engineer's comments dated October 10, 2012, and two, that the conditions of the original approval are still applicable. Okay. Any further comment? Victoria, did you want to add anything there? Do I um, need to make a formal add um, for the condition that was not met back in December? That the applicant says he's still updating condition number seven about changing the wording with that? Uh, in my opinion, there are several conditions from the original approval that haven't been met yet. Okay. And so those have to be met plus anything tonight. Okay. And that's why uh, I am recommending that condition number two so it's made crystal clear that all the original conditions still have to be complied with. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, great. Any further discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Maureen, can you explain what the rumble was? <laughs> well, the, we are very fortunate tonight to have in the audience Public Works Director Robert Malley, who um, exercised all his connections and contacted the Portland Dispatch Office, where they reported they had received about 400 calls regarding an earthquake. Uh, ah, so. okay. So we, have, we have cool. had an earthquake. Thank you. We'll be on the news. Wow. <laughs> Eight on the Richter scale and 4.5 miles west of Sebago for anyone who's listening at home. <laughs> and we hope you're all okay and your houses are all okay but the town hall seems to be fine so we're going to move on to the next item on our agenda which is the fort williams park site improvements for 2012 the town of cape elizabeth is requesting review of four areas of site improvements implementing the master plan specifically expansion of ship cove parking upgrade of the Ship Cove picnic area slab, vehicular improvements at the intersection of Ocean Road and Wheatley Road, and vehicular and pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Powers Road and Ship Cove parking lot entrance drive and Ocean Road, section 19.9 site plan review completeness. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent the town of Cape Elizabeth for the Fort Williams Park site improvement project. Um, if you remember from the, uh, the workshop meeting, uh, the recently approved 
Fort Williams Park <coughs> Master Plan update uh, contained a list of 10 priority items. The Town Council has approved uh, four of those 10 priority items, uh, or approved funding to design and construct for the priority items. This is a plan that um, illustrates the roughly the project area. It extends from Chapel Road, which is the road that accesses the Guarded Mansion, uh, all the way over to uh, where the loop is on the main access road. Uh, the Cliffside Arboretum is located here. And this is called Wheatley Road, which is the road that accesses or provides access to the overflow parking up on above the, uh, the bleachers. So this, this is the, the project area. It also consists of the uh, picnic shelter down at Ship Cove. So um, I just wanted to highlight um, the, some of the, the main features um, of the priority uh, items. Priority one uh, is to expand the parking lot at Ship Cove, improve vehicular circulation with a turnaround improve pedestrian circulation. Priority two is to replace the concrete slab at the picnic shelter, incorporate a safety handrail, remove miscellaneous concrete, and stabilize some ongoing erosion. Priority five is at the Ocean Road and Wheatley Road intersection, and we're gonna re realign Wheatley Road at the intersection and improve site drainage. And the last priority, priority seven, is located at um, the Powers Road uh, intersection where it intersects the parking lot entrance and we're going to redefine the vehicular circulation at this intersection and incorporate some plantings. So beginning with uh, priority one, uh, this is the existing Ship Cove parking lot, the, the ocean, or uh, the, the high water line is located here. Um, in the picnic shelter is located here. So what the proposal is to expand the Ship Cove parking lot and the design calls for a, a circular cul-de-sac uh, design uh, with a grass island in the middle and parking um, around the perimeter of the cul-de-sac. We have added uh, an additional 25 parking spaces uh, in this design for a total of 72 spaces. The design also includes several pedestrian improvements. Uh, one, uh, and I believe this is one that the board uh, asked us to look at, is to provide a, a paved walkway that runs parallel with the existing parking lot. So uh, we have done that, and uh, it is separated, as you can see, from the edge of the pavement uh, with a grass esplanade. Uh, the second walkway is to provide a handicap accessible walkway that leads from the parking lot uh, to the picnic area. And then uh, we've also sort of um, enhanced or re redefined the pedestrian circulation leading from the parking area up to Chapel Road. Um, as you know, there's, a, there's quite a bit of uh, pavement in this area. Um, it dates back to <coughs> uh, the uh, military uh, when this, this area was designed for vehicular circulation. Um, so we've designed a, a five foot wide pedestrian walkway here in an eight foot wide um, pedestrian walkway that will allow for emergency vehicles on that uh, side. Uh, we've also uh, done some drainage <coughs> improvements in the area. Right now, the, the drainage basically um, in this grass area, sheet flows towards Ship Cove and into the ocean. We have uh, incorporated two catch basins, one here and one here that will pick up the majority of the runoff from the pavement. Uh, the pipe will uh, connect to an existing catch basin located here, and then there's an outlet pipe that flows to this uh, out into the Ship Cove. And, and again, as we discussed at 
the uh, workshop meeting, these catch basins will have two foot deep sumps in them that will allow the sediments to settle uh, and those are cleaned out periodically. So we're, we're capturing a lot of the sediments from the, the paved surface before it goes into the ocean. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, priority two is the picnic area. And what we're going to do here is to replace the concrete slab, which is um, terribly cracked, um, and to replace it with a new slab. Uh, we're going to remove uh, a lot of miscellaneous concrete in this area here and replace it with uh, lawn area. Uh, we're also going to provide a handrail, a safety handrail, um, along the picnic area where there is a um, a drop off from the slab. And then finally we're going to um, we're going to stabilize some erosion, some ongoing erosion that is occurring uh, along Keys Road. Priority five is to basically realign this intersection of Wheatley Road. Currently it comes out in this in a very you know acute angle to the main access road. It's difficult for vehicles to, uh, to enter while there's a, a vehicle exiting. Uh, so we're going to realign it so that the Wheatley Road comes in at a 90 degrees uh, to the main access road. And basically, it's just a, a relocation of approximately 150 feet of 18-foot uh, wide roadway. Um, and it will blend into the existing roadway at this point here. Uh, in addition, we're going to build a small retaining wall, a stone retaining wall, uh, in this location in a short section on this location. And we're also going to improve some of the drainage in this area. We've located a catch basin here, which will uh, capture a lot of the runoff coming down uh, Wheatley Road uh, before it crosses Ocean Road. And this. Uh, outlet pipe will connect to a, uh, we're going to replace an existing catch basin structure here, and then the outlet pipe is going to outlet um, towards the ocean. And then, oops, what happened? Um, and then the final uh, priority item is priority seven which is the intersection of the Ship Cove parking lot entrance drive. And we're going to eliminate a lot of the excess pavement, uh, primarily in this area here, um, and to, again, bring the access drive in at 90 degrees to the main road. Uh, there'll be uh, other pedestrian improvements. Uh, we're going to widen the uh, bituminous walk that runs parallel with the main access road. Uh, if you remember, there's a small stone wall, small retaining wall on, on uh, the outer edge, and there'll be a curb along the roadway uh, to help protect the pedestrians uh, circulating from the parking lot up uh, towards the Arboretum area. Uh, we're also going to provide a couple crosswalks uh, in this area and in this area, and there'll be uh, some planting, uh, some plantings done in primarily in this planting area here. So those are that's a, a quick overview of uh, some of the site improvements that are being proposed. Thank you. Our first issue is completeness. Do we have any questions before we open the floor for public comment? Thank you. Yeah, Henry. When I when the workshop, I remember. I, sorry, <laughs> I thought that you'd made the parking, the circular parking lot, the roundery. We're going to put marking on there, saying one way. At the moment, it, it's either. If you look at the, yeah, it's not on that map. Yeah. It's further up there, the, the yeah. rotary part of the parking. Is that going to be one way, or you can drive cars in both directions, clockwise? Well, I, I remember discussing that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that we came to any final resolution. Um, it is designed as a two-way. The, the aisle is 24 feet wide. Um, 
You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I think that the natural flow is to, is to flow in a straight, rather than having to negotiate this turn, the natural flow is going Anti -clockwise, to be... Anti-clockwise, I would have thought, would have been the natural turn around there. Rather than that way, it was going to be, become straight down and around. But right, that's the natural... So it's anti-clockwise. But you haven't got an arrow, so people will be a bit confused, I'm sure, if you don't mark the road. <clears throat> but, I mean, as everything else is for safety, I guess that's what I would like to have seen anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll consider that. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, I'll now open the floor for public comment if there are any members of the public who'd like to speak on this the completeness of this application. Okay, anyone on the board have questions? If not, would someone like to make a motion for completeness? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of provo proposed improvements to Fort Williams Park located off Shore Road, specifically items no, number one, two, five, and seven of the recently adopted Fort Williams Master Plan be deemed complete. Do I have a second? Victoria, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Okay, so um, we can now begin discussion substantively. Um, and we can also think about, as we ask questions, whether we want to have a site walk. Anyone feels a need for that? But let's go through any substantive questions that anyone might have. I had one question. Um, on one of Amex's comments was uh, the designer should consider adding handicap ramps at each of the crosswalk locations. I was confused by what that would mean exactly. I mean, aren't all those crosswalks handicapped accessible? Uh, they are, and uh, th I believe that they, and we've added them. I mean, we, we've addressed all of these comments on these plans. Um, we have added a handicap ramp here, here, and here. Um, when you say ramp, you mean a curb cut, like you show in your detail with the... Yeah, I mean, we, we, we provided a curb cut. Um, they're asking us to provide, uh, if you've been down the Shore Road pathway at the handicap ramps, they've provided a, uh, it's a steel plate with protrusions. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that that's what they're asking for, so we've, we've added that detail. Well, it's for the visually impaired. And are you accepting all of Amex's other recommendations? Some of them were requirements, and some of them were phrased as suggestions. Uh, yeah, the, these, I mean, you know, most of these comments are, are fairly minor in nature. Uh, I believe that we have agreed with all of the, the comments, whether they be suggestions or not. Uh, okay. Why don't we consider adding additional accessible parking space under number six? Oh, yes. Um, on the uh, Ship Cove parking area, the two handicapped parking spaces that are located here are existing. Those, those currently exist today. Uh, we have added a third, a van accessible space at the, the beginning of the, the existing parking lot. So we have a total, of, um, a total of 72 parking spaces, three of which are handicapped. Okay. And then I think there were just a couple of suggestions for more clearly drawing the plans. Correct. Anyone else have questions? Would anyone like to make a motion? I don't think we have one. 
missing. I may be missing a page. Yes, do. We do. Okay, then I'm, I'm just missing a page. page. All right. Would someone like to make site? Uh, yes. First question is, we can do a site walk, in which case we would table this until after the site walk, or if we don't feel we need a site walk or have any more questions, we can go forward with a motion. I don't think we need one, although it's like a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? We need one. Anyone think we need a site walk? Okay, good. <clears throat> then we're open for a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Victoria? Motion for a uh, oh. Oh, could, excuse me, could I make one comment before yes. you make a motion? We did ask for a waiver on the stormwater calculations. I don't know if you want to include that in your motion or not. My, my comment would be that you've already deemed it complete and the waiver is implied. Okay. All set. Go ahead. Motion for tabling in public hearing be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for a site plan review of proposed improvements to Fort Williams Park, located offshore road, specifically items number one, two, five, and seven of the recently adopted Fort Williams Master Plan, be tabled to the regular November 20th, 2012 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Do we need a public hearing, Maureen? You're not required, excuse me. Uh, this is site plan review. You're not required to hold a public hearing for site plan review. But uh, Fort Williams is uh, near and dear to many people's hearts, and I think it's appropriate, it's prudent to provide an opportunity for people to comment. Okay. I know we have in the past with Fort Williams items. Okay. So did we get a second? Joe, did you second? Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the next item on our agenda. Seas Gourmet Market Site Plan. KMC Properties is requesting a site plan review of a proposed mixed use Specialty Market Office Building, 4,140 square feet, located at 349 Ocean House Road, Section 19.9, Site Plan Completeness. Excuse me, Elaine, before you begin, I have to recuse myself from this one. I've had uh, some business dealings with the applicant. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Do I have to? No, you can. You, can you feel sit. like you can control yourself. You can step up there. <laughs> <laughs> You need some more materials, John? Yeah, we're just going to put up one here. Okay, thank you. I'm the only one that has it. Please uh, permission. I, I can send it to you. Because it, it would have been in the email document. I'm guessing the page that's stuck in the copier. <laughs> you probably find it upstairs. Actually, I don't think I got this. I don't think you did either. That's a planner. <laughs> it's on my list. Thank you. Go okay. Right ahead. Um, John Mitchell and I represent uh, Mike and Stephanie Concannon who are here this evening um, as well as Mark Mueller of Mark Mueller Architects uh, for the proposed Seas Gourmet Market. Um, the, the location uh, of the proposed market is at 349 Ocean House Road. Um, this is on the corner of the intersection of Ocean House Road and the high school driveway. This is the high school driveway, this is Ocean House Road, and this is the property. The property consists of a little over three quarters of an acre. 
Um, it was a former real estate um, business located, the, the building was located uh, in this area here, access and a small parking lot towards the rear. Um, abutters to the property include the high school, which is off to the, the west. Uh, there's a single family residence uh, located to the south, which is also in the town center zone district, uh, Ocean House Road, and the high school driveway. And the community services building is located uh, on the other side of the drive. It's in the town center uh, district, which allows retail, restaurants, specialty markets, and offices. Um, the, all, this is an existing conditions plan, as you can see by these symbols here. Uh, there are several hardwood trees, many of them which are uh, run along the high school driveway, which are actually off of our property. Uh, but there's a concentration of, of hardwood trees in the north and east uh, sections of the property. Uh, the property is relatively open, though, um, with very little understory. It slopes from the front to the rear. There's a, uh, an average slope of 3 to 10 percent. Um, and the site is well serviced by existing public utilities. There is a water main and ocean house. There's a sewer in the high school driveway area, um, as well as electric telephone and cable, overhead electric telephone and cable utilities. Um, I've got a, just a, a short series of site photographs. That wasn't supposed to be the first. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, just to give you, uh, to show you what the character of the property is, uh, this, well, the top photograph is the frontage uh, along Ocean House Road. Uh, the lower photograph is the high school entrance drive. This is a view looking from Ocean House Road towards the high school. As you can see, there's an existing paved walkway that runs parallel with the drive. This is, an area, this is taken from uh, the inside of the site looking towards the community services building. And this is the location of where we're proposing a secondary uh, access drive. This is a uh, view looking towards the single family residence. As you can see, there are several mature uh, fir trees that are located actually on the abutted property that but provide a, a very good screen. And there's also an existing six foot high stockade fence that runs along the property line. Uh, another view looking towards Ocean House Road, there's a across the street abutter. This is a winter scene looking at uh, the same uh, property line. And finally, this is the uh, rear property line taken from the parking lot looking towards the property. So uh, the proposal is for a uh, specialty market. Uh, it will be family owned and um, it will have a, a distinct menu with prepared foods to go, such as sandwiches, soups, baked goods, fresh salads, cheese, uh, serve yourself coffee area, um, to mention a few of the items. Uh, there will be a small area located, and Mark will get into more detail on the uh, floor plan, uh, but there will be a small area with a few tables inside um, as well as a, a small counter area for people who want to sit and, um, and have their, their lunch or their breakfast. Um, Port Printing Solutions is a, is a printing company that Mike and Cannon owns. It's a non-retail printing company, and he intends to relocate his company uh, to the second floor of the building sometime in the future. The building is a, uh, it's a 3,000 square foot uh, footprint 
of the building is 1,500 square feet on the second story. Uh, <clears throat> the siting of the building is, uh, was situated in the, uh, the northeast corner of the, of the property or the portion of the property. Uh, With, a, with the front of the building facing Ocean House Road that will give a, a strong street presence to the building. Uh, the building has been designed with the service on the north end of the building and the patio space on the south side of the building. There are several access points uh, into the building. One is obviously the main entrance uh, in the front of the building. There's another one uh, off of the service drive into the kitchen area. The main access drive, our door leading from the parking lot is located here. And there's another door leading out onto the patio in, on this side of the building, as well as a door that leads up to the second floor in this location. The patio space uh, was a key element in the overall design of, of this uh, facility. Um, it, as I noted, it's on the south side of the building, um, and it's designed to allow seasonal outdoor eating area. It will accommodate um, uh, four tables and chairs comfortably. Um, the patio area will be uh, the circular patio area will be a small retaining wall that, uh, that runs along the, the edge of the patio. Uh, the intention is to provide a, uh, a lattice style fence which will run in the curvature of the patio so that we can grow some uh, nice looking uh, vines along that lattice style fence. Uh, the main access, there are two access points the main access is off Ocean House Road in this location where the current access is. Uh, we have widened the access from 14 feet to 20 feet wide uh, to allow a, uh, a safer in and out access. Uh, the parking to the back um, and then the secondary access uh, is onto the high school driveway. Uh, parking uh, there are 27 parking spaces that are required. Uh, when you calculate all of the, uh, uh, the number of seats in the restaurant, the square footage, the number of employees in the office space, 27 spaces are required and we're proposing 27. As far as utilities are concerned, we're bringing in uh, public water off of Ocean House Road we're bringing in sewer off of the uh, high school driveway in this location here. And we're bringing underground electric telephone and cable from an existing utility pole right here uh, underground to the, to the building. Uh, there will be a propane tank, an underground propane tank located on the service end of the building. Uh, stormwater management, we've got a series of catch basins and storm drain piping that will collect uh, the majority of the, the runoff from the property and direct it into a, the existing storm drain system, which is uh, in the high school or on the high school property. Uh, one catch basin is located here, and another catch basin is located uh, right here. So all of our runoff, or most of our runoff will be uh, connected to those two structures. The, the stormwater from that, from that point runs down to, uh, through the high school property to, uh, to a low area behind the swimming pool. And we've got um, a full stormwater management report in your booklet. Uh, lighting, we have a series of seven uh, Light fixtures, uh, mainly around the parking area, and one at the entrance. Um, these are LED 60-watt uh, uh, fixtures on 12-foot high uh, poles. There are also two town center light fixtures located over in the esplanade along Ocean House Road. 
And one of the sheets in our set is a photometric plan that shows uh, the, the level of foot candles throughout the property and along the property lines. Uh, planting, we've got uh, a number of uh, deciduous, flowering deciduous trees uh, in the parking lot along the entrance drive. Uh, we're preserving all of these trees. Uh, we have a, a, a screen of uh, lilacs, which will help buffer um, both parking lots. Uh, we also have added additional plantings uh, within this space here to, to help the, the buffering requirement. Uh, we have a dumpster located uh, in this location here for uh, easy access by the, uh, the truck and to locate it in a location where it's furthest away from the residential property. And then finally, uh, we have two easements that are being uh, conveyed to the town. One is a sidewalk easement. Uh, it's a 15-foot wide sidewalk easement running along Ocean House Road. This is to allow uh, the public walkway to encroach onto our property. The second easement is um, an access and, um, and utility easement which will consist of this area here. This will allow uh, the two-way access from our property onto town property, as well as bringing utilities from this location onto our property. So um, we have um, a grading drainage and utilities plan. Uh, we have this is a, a copy or rendered copy of the planting plan. Um, and then uh, we have a floor plans which Mark will um, present to you and a series of elevations. So. Hello, I am Mark Mueller. I'm an architect uh, located in Portland. And thank you for um, allowing me to speak tonight. And thank you for the, the King Cannons for letting us uh, be involved in this project. Um, a lot of the notes that I had written for tonight, uh, John has talked about. So I'll probably just have to sort of talk about the building in general. Um, I think basically, the, as we met with the King Cannons early on, uh, they did have some drawings, but they had expressed an interest in a, what I've sort of thought of like a, a historic, you know, mercantile type of building. And so this is, um, in my mind, as we've been moving forward, that's how I've sort of been seeing it. And so we've sat and talked quite a bit about, you know, the interior of the building and how it really relates to the outside. A lot of the circulation, a lot of those elements, uh, John had, had worked out originally. So we were sort of working towards those as a guideline. And so that's sort of what you see here in the bottom, the bottom right hand drawing. That is the first floor plan. Uh, the bottom faces um, Ocean House Road. Uh, so I guess those, I, that entrance is, addresses the street. Probably the, on the upper left hand side is probably going to ultimately be more of a main entrance. Uh, that faces the parking lot. So. As you enter there, there's, there's an entry element, uh, there's a porch. Uh, this is something that we'd been talking about, you know, kind of after the fact. And that, that sort of provides sort of an outdoor patio space uh, for people that are, you know, visiting. And um, the, the basic plan is a square, which um, sort of worked out in that it allows, you know, easy access. Uh, as spaces get longer and more linear, you know, these people sort of get herded down long lines. So this here, this square really allows people to move in circles and there's, uh, there's quite a few different activities in there. There's the, the, the rounded horseshoe shape, I guess, is the basic element of, of the interior and that's the sandwich, food preparation. The, the lower right hand corner is the, is the restaurant uh, coffee shop that, that John had mentioned. Uh, Elsewhere, there'll be uh, you know prepared foods, uh, display, etc. 
on the left hand side, the right hand side, I'm sorry, that is the kitchen. And so it is off on, you know, faces the high school access. I think the, um, the element there is to locate, you know, the commercial aspects of the building away from the residential side of, of the project. And so there will be uh, an entrance there. Again, we've tried to, you know, address that with, you know, windows and doors and, and really keep it in, in conformance with the rest of the building. Uh, the second floor is the bottom uh, left-hand drawing. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, but it shows, uh, you know, one large open space. There'll be some columns in there. And then um, Mike had talked about creating dormers uh, on the left-hand side, which faces south and, and really helped to address that elevation facing the residential uh, with, with the interest of um, in dormers. And there's also the, the low porch in there as well that really helps to kind of scale down that side of the building and gives it a real strong sense of entry. The upper right-hand drawing is the basement. It's, it's basically just storage. Um, can we go to the elevations? <coughs> this is the, uh, the building elevations, of course. Um, our main one is the bottom right-hand drawing. That was really the, the essence of the, um, of the design. It's basically a, a simple gable shape. Um, <clears throat> the porches and the kitchens, per se, are dormers that, that lay on top of that. I think simplicity was, um, you know, paramount in what we're doing here to work with the conformance of the, the village atmosphere. The height of the building is, uh, is 26 and a half feet. I've talked to Bruce Smith, and he's kind of given us some guidelines on uh, definitions of um, building height. One, the um, I guess mostly because this is on a little bit of a slope site. So we're at 26 and a half feet. Uh, John gave you some square footages of the building. Um, basically the footprint is, that we're working with is, is just shy of 3,000 square feet. The building materials um, is basically going to be horizontal types of siding. Um, we've talked about a, a hardy plank or a cementitious uh, clapboard. So this would be a material that would really have the same essence of, uh, of wood. It would have um, the benefit of um, you know, not being wood. And, and there's uh, quite a bit of longevity to it as well. And so I think we would look at getting you know, a pre-finished uh, horizontal siding. We've talked a little bit about the, the lower banding, the, let's say the first story as being a little bit wider boards and with a rough finish and then the upper story would be more of a typical four inch clapboard, four inch to weather um, and, and more of a smooth type finish. The building would be white basically and with probably green windows I think is what we're thinking initially and the shutters, either side of the, the main entry element, that's supposed to be, I suppose that might sort of resemble an old uh, New England type of uh, barn door, per se. However, it has glass and transoms, win windows in it, to, uh, and that really becomes the, the entry element off of the main street. Either side of that, they're a little hard to see, but there are some, some panels shown that really become shutters. And so, you know, that would have a, a dark green element to it as well. I think that pretty much covers everything. Are there, are there questions about the building? I have one quick question. I noticed you've got a circular letter counter, I presume, is it? It's on the initial, not this one, the, the, the view before you had a semicircular or a hook. This hook. Oh, sure. It's your floor plan. From the floor plan. That, that's the main service counter. Oh, okay. That would be, um, you know, there would, that would be where the orders are taken. Um, there would be baked goods for display. And so that's really the is, main entrance at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In the bottom. I mean, and there's a. Okay. It's, you, you've got a break in the horseshoe. I presume that's the entrance to the horseshoe. Yeah, that would be for uh, you know employees to to move in and about. 
Uh, the door in the back there allows access to the kitchen. So that, the kitchen and that, that main counter area are really the, uh, the basis of, the, of uh, the space. Everything radiates around it. I have a general question about the interior layout. If it's part of the plan that's submitted, does that mean the applicant can't change it? Or, I mean, it seems like we don't even need necessarily to look at the interior layout. There are things that we need the interior for, um, and those things couldn't be materially changed. For example, the floor plan gives you a, a an example, not example, it tells you how many seats there are. Right. And seating is seat. crucial for calculating parking. Yeah. But, you know, if, if the applicant were to come back and they still had the same number of seats and they were going to change the, the configuration of the interior, I wouldn't see that as triggering planning board review. If they wanted to move the front door someplace um, or move windows other than the way it looks from the outside, my interpretation would be that that would trigger a planning board review. But typically in these situations, we get floor plans primarily to, ex to prove to us that what they're proposing the use is really is what they're designing. Okay, thanks. It is true that the interior may alter a little bit. Um, you know, we've looked at two or three scenarios on how to best optimize this, and I think this is the current one, but things will get adjusted a little bit. What did you say that the exterior material was going to um, be? It, it's a, a cementitious siding called hardy plank. I, our first issue is completeness, and I, I do have one question. Um, because we're in the town center zone, and this is a question for you, Maureen, as much as anything, we do have design requirements here, yes, and the design requirements are not specifically itemized in the materials that have been presented to us. So to me, there's an issue as to completeness as to whether we can determine from the materials in front of us whether the various design requirements are met. Um, it would be, I think, easier for us and perhaps a request for the next time if you could address them specifically, because since we are in the town center, it, it's a little different on, on the design issues. I guess my sense is that if we go through these plans, we can probably pull out enough material here to address most of those design issues, but they aren't, it's, it's kind of ignored in the materials that are presented to us. I think if you refer, if, refer to building materials, they are on the plans. If I could. There, there's notes um, and. Well, it's true that the applicant hasn't on one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Um, I do check the plans for the information we need to meet the design requirements and consistency with the design requirements. So I haven't found anything in the proposal by the applicant that is, is contrary to the design standards. There are a few design standards where it really is up to the board to decide whether landscaping has been provided that's sufficient for uh, meeting the standard. But the standards that talk about the maximum size of the building footprint, we, we know the building footprint is like 3,500 and, and the maximum size is 5,000. Uh, there is a front door, there are windows that face the street. Um, there is, you, I, you probably haven't given us the roof pitch, but I can look at it and tell you that it's, it's in the area that, that we're talking about. Um, but certainly, you know, if the board wants to ask the applicant in, in his next iteration, to specifically address the individual design standards, you, you could ask for that. I would like to do that just to establish a precedent that we are taking very seriously the, the specific design standards that are in the town center, almost as we would do fi formal findings to conclude that, in fact, it does meet the design requirements there. You know, they're compatible with surrounding buildings. It's a difficult thing to get a handle on here given what surrounds this property, but I do think we need to walk through that procedure just to honor what we have written in our zoning ordinance. But I guess my sense is I wouldn't turn down completeness based on that, based on your comment. I don't know if others have comments on that. Just for my own information, is there a specific requirement to list 
those standards, one, two, three, four? Well, it does say the following requirements shall be applicable to all developments which requires site plan review by the planning board. And, and then there is a listing, so it, it, it would seem to me that in the town center, I suppose it, the site plan, re, it, it lists them in a different way, but in order for us to be sure that we meet all the requirements that are, are a part of this zone, I would think we would want to have them listed. Okay. I, I guess the, the, it's not that you miss them. I think what the board is asking for is just a, a concise summary mm -hmm. of how you've addressed each one. Yep. Well, for example, I don't think we have any information about how the scale of this building compares to the scale of any surrounding buildings because we have no information on any surrounding buildings. So we actually don't have that information. We have the scale of this building and we could go out on the street and do our own comparison, but since scale, comparable scale is an express requirement, I think it would be helpful for you to address that. The same thing, the height of the building and the type of roof design um, is consistent with the streetscape. And so it, it's a little bit different kind of requirement than you would have in a site plan in an area that was not in the town center. Okay. And, and just for the applicant, some of those scale, that scale information, we can lift out of the town center master plan of existing buildings. So it's not like you have to go find a whole bunch of more information. Anybody else? Um, so I guess we take public comment on completeness. Anyone, any members of the public wish to comment on the issue of completeness? If not, any board members? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Um, motion for the board to consider. Um, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of KMC LLC for site plan review of C's Gourmet Market, a new retail office building proposed to be located at 349 Ocean House Road, be deemed complete. Do I have a second? Henry? Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? That is one, two, three, four, five of us with Joe abstaining. The next thing for us to consider is whether we want to do a site walk and or a public hearing. I think a public hearing would be necessary, but uh, I don't think the site walk, I personally pass it every day. I would do a site walk. Do it. Just to get a feel for the surrounding area and the design requirements, and I mean, I could, I could look at it on my own. But, um, I'd like to take a look at the residential house next door. Yeah, that would be the reason buffering for myself. My other question is: um, we have a traffic report here. Um, where are we in terms of discussions with the town on the proposed easement? Are you far along in? getting the easement that you need from the town for access on and off? Yes, we are, yeah. Um, actually, I, I believe there's a draft in your booklet. Well, I, I, there is a draft. I just didn't know whether that was your draft or this is something where we, we've made some progress in the town. The, the town has already granted the concept of the easement and the applicant. Granted the concept? That, well, they haven't. They haven't formalized the final language, okay. but they have voted to grant an easement. The okay. applicant has paid for the easement, okay. and their vote was just to submit a document that meets the standards of the town attorney and the manager <coughs> can sign it. The applicant has prepared that document. The town attorney has reviewed it and provided comments, and presumably the applicant is revising the draft to meet the town attorney's comments. The board can always, if you get to the point that you are willing to consider a motion for approval of the project, you can still make it a condition that they can't do anything with the approval until uh, the easement has been provided in a form acceptable to the town attorney. So okay. I guess we're, I, I, my impression is we're in the I dotting and T crossing stage. Okay. And in, in terms of the traffic study, has that been part of the discussion with the town council in terms of the adequacy of that road to meet the anticipated traffic and because I would anticipate that would be an issue for the public because of the 
traffic backups we already have at the high school. I was not at the meeting where the council discussed this with the applicant, but they did agree to grant an easement. And so my presumption is they consider traffic impacts. Okay. Is that, that's something else I was thinking about. We would want to take a look at at the site walk and certainly be prepared. I, I want to qualify that. I do remember at, at that discussion that just because the council has decided that as a property owner they're willing to grant an easement over their property, that doesn't preclude the planning board from its responsibilities to make sure that the traffic meets the site plan standards. Right. Yeah. Right. And I could see people cutting through the parking lot if they have a hard time turning out to the road. Yeah. Yeah. Something I would think we would want to address with a site walk to see just how it's going to work and how it will relate to the property and, and all of that. So should we see about scheduling? You know, notice one thing on, on, on the plan that if you're coming out of there and you're turning left to go past down towards you're going to be in a one on a turn left lane section of, of 77 so you have to come over take a left and then pull over to the right yeah we'll have to take a look at that. yeah okay timing wise you've got to do weekends it's getting unless you I mean it's getting dark at six o'clock now Okay. So unless you're you're available at 5 p.m. on a weekday, I think you've got to look at a weekend site walk. What do people think? Is 5 p.m. on a weekday work? Any day works for me. Yeah. Carol, Victoria, yeah, most, 5 most p.m. on a weekday yeah. work? <laughs> Mostly. Can I go on the sidewalk if I don't say anything? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are there some days that don't? Uh, could you? Propose a day that does work for you? Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Fridays. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Fridays. Next week? Not obviously not this week. Yep. Next week being what are the dates next week? Twenty second, twenty third. I could do Monday or Tuesday next week. Tuesday's better. How about next Tuesday at five o'clock? Can you do a site walk? You don't want to do it a little earlier. Get dark at six. Are you going to use the whole hour? Or are you going to let less than an hour? I could do earlier. I don't know about others. Earlier would be harder. Earlier would be more difficult. I think I can do Tuesday. Hmm. You were saying Monday, Tuesday, or Friday? Yeah. Next Friday doesn't work for me. Okay. A week from Friday does not work. It's, I believe, the 23rd. Yeah, I'm just... Thank it is, it is definitely the 23rd. Yes, it is. Tuesday is the 23rd. Okay. So if that works for you. What time? 4.30. We do 4.30. Fine for me. Can you make it? Bit, Can you just make it easier to make it at 5. <laughs> All right. We'll do it at 5 and we'll be efficient. <clears throat> That's the 23rd? Yes. Um, as long as we're talking about a site walk, I just wanted to mention... Um, the rules for a site walk, and we are addressing at that time only physical questions about the site um, and any discussion of related issues really has to wait until we're in a public meeting, although a site walk is open to the public, it is not a public meeting for discussion purposes, so we all need to stay together. Um, I'll be asking one question at a time so we can all hear the responses, but then discussion of issues or things we might like to see on a plan um, really is not supposed to occur at the site block. Have I so, summarized that effectively? So if, for example, you have a question about something that would affect the use or make it difficult to use, reserve it for the meeting rather than at the site block. For example, you can say, do you intend to keep this tree? Yes or no. But you cannot then go forward and say, gee, if you kept that tree, it might help the next door property. Okay. And ask a question. You can ask a question, as it relates what, what, do you, what will this facade be as it relates to the next door neighbor to get the facts, but not then discuss the pros and cons of the decision? Okay, claim I follow. Would you add anything to that, Maureen? No, I think that was, I mean, it's, it's like fact-finding. Yeah. And any, the public is welcome to come, and anyone who happens to be listening, the, the public also needs to respect.
those rules. Um, it is not a discussion time. It is not a time for members in the, of the public to engage in discussion with the applicant. Again, that is supposed to be occurring at a public meeting, and there will be plenty of opportunity to do that. Okay, in that case, um, we can have discussion now if we want to, or just table this for the next meeting after the site walk and schedule a public hearing. Or do you want to discuss that? Pull out, except it, it pulls out into a, uh, the layout says when you come out of the parking lot and you want to turn left towards Portland, mm -hmm. you're going to be in Route 77 with the turn left only. So you come out of here into into this. There's going to be an entrance in here. I noticed it was a footpath only uh, shown. I know. I thought it was shown on this so go over That's why I was looking. Access points again. This one here. Review the access points. Yeah, and I'm going to try to not. I think the intent, the expectation is, and the applicant will have to convince the board that this is the expectation is that when people are exiting the property and they want to head north, that they will uh, choose to exit into the high school driveway because that will guarantee them a signalized. Inter yes. in intersection onto Route 77 right. versus trying to cut into traffic independently to make a left turn right. onto 77 from the main entrance. It would make more sense, I agree, if they know about it. Do we, do we have the right to make it right turn only? The board, could, the board could discuss that. I, I, you know, I think you can look to the applicant and, and um, give them direction that you really are expecting at the next meeting for them to be prepared to talk about options on how traffic moves and circulates through the site and what are the advantages of thing, things like if you're exiting the site directly under 77 making it a right turn only um, looking at any concerns about cut through traffic um, from the high school drive if you give the applicant some heads up on that perhaps he'll be able to come back at the next meeting with your answers? Yeah, I mean, I think Maureen just perfectly articulated my concerns, which is cut through traffic in both directions, really, mm. and left turn um, onto 77. There is no left turn out onto the high school driveway, is that correct? Yes, there is. We're, we're proposing a two way uh, right turn and left turn. Uh, a full you can turn left onto the high school access road? Yes. Oh. Yes. And you, you can it, turn left or right out of either entrance is your proposal? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought so, at some point I had read that you would not be able to turn an earlier left. Proposal. An earlier proposal. Ah, yeah. okay. Well, you I think. Hmm? You didn't imagine it. Okay. It's, it's, you know, it's anticipated that a fair number of customers will be students and our staff coming in in the morning. They'll, they'll enter the site at the primary access park, um, go in and come out, and then exit here, exit at the secondary drive and take a left. Um, I, I want to note that the traffic study included a queuing analysis. And when they did the traffic study, they did traffic counts on site both a.m. and p.m. peak hours. Right. And it was during the high school season. Uh, they've also uh, inflated their, their numbers uh, to coincide with the month of August. So uh, they've, they've factored that in, the, the peak hours of Ocean House Road. I guess what I'm thinking about is in the morning, you're going to have lots of people turning left from Route 77 into the high school drive. And when that traffic light finishes, you're going to have lots of people turning right from Route 77 into the high school drive. So for some significant period in the morning, there is essentially no break in traffic that would allow someone exiting from the restaurant to turn left onto the high school driveway. It's, it's kind of a constant traffic flow, and, and I'm just not... Yeah. clear that the traffic analysis really, the traffic analysis does not specifically address that, but I can, I can certainly anticipate a backup there and not a window of opportunity 
for a young high school driver to turn left safely onto the high school access road? Well, again, they have the option. They have the option of either turning left or exiting the primary access, turn left on Ocean House Road, go to the signal, and, right. and make the same, another movement. They're in the same traffic backup from all the traffic coming up 77 trying to turn left into the high school. I wonder if the person who did the traffic analysis might be able to talk to us a little more about that, because to me that's, you know, it's only for short periods of the day, but it is the periods which might be the busiest, both for the high school and for the restaurant if they're giving breakfast items to students. Okay, I'll talk, to, it was Tom Goral. That would be helpful to have him at the site walk. At the site walk? Actually, I don't think we can have uh, that discussion at the site walk, can we? Uh, For fact finding, physical features. Yeah, I think uh, we'll have to have him here in the, at the meeting if we want to have a discussion. And I also anticipate that there'll be lots of members of the public that might have that concern um, because they wait in those lines in the morning. So if, if he were here to address those questions, I think it would be helpful. Okay. Then my, my, I have a concern. It's um, the approval standard section 19-9-5. And I brought it up before, and I, I can't remember what the answer was. But it's under um, traffic access and parking. <coughs> and access to site number 2, D, it says, no part of any driveway shall be located within a minimum of 10 feet of a side property line. The, the parking? Um, yeah, no part of any driveway shall be located within a minimum of 10 feet right. of a side property. So, so this is 10 feet here, okay. we, and we've added a buffer. Okay. Um, we okay. have actually, right now, the edge of this, the existing park, uh, entry drive mm -hmm. is right on the corner of the property. We've moved it five feet away. Okay. So, so it's, it's grand, five feet it's grand, from the property line. It's five That's feet the way we from the property Yeah. Line. And so would that require a variance, like a zoning variance? Or? We've treated it, in the past, we've treated those as it's an existing condition. Oh, uh, OK. Like I mean, a, a I legal, understand why yeah. you want it at that bottom corner of the property. It would be a, like a legal, non-conforming driveway. OK. And you can't make it more non-conforming by moving it closer to the property line. Okay. Elaine? Yes, Victoria. When I was reading over the plan, I, I was trying to look for certain features on your plan, and one of the things I had a hard time finding was where the service area was, where the trucks would come in. And I, I know now from hearing you, but I was wondering if you could just maybe possibly label that on the plan. Sure. So that it's clear. and. Um, I, I don't know, is there any standard for making sure nobody parks in that area? Do you stripe Would it? What? Making sure no one parks in the area? Do you stripe it? Do you put a sign up? Um, um, there, there probably will be a sign that identifies it as service. Um, it's a 12-foot aisle, 12-foot uh, drive. Mm -hmm. um, well, we can, we can sign it. Um, I was also wondering, where is your snow storage location? Where will you be pushing? Yeah, we've addressed that in the booklet. Um, snow storage will be, you know, during a light to normal storm, it will be stored around the perimeter of the parking and uh, drives. Uh, during real heavy storms, uh, we would anticipate removing the snow off-site. Okay. And um, we have been addressing the main entrance. And um, as we continue to address that and with the different signs that could be there, um, when I first thought it was a two-way and that's how it would remain, I was looking for like a stop sign or something. And I the, didn't originally see it. There, is there is there? a stop sign shown on the site plan right here. That, oh, I thought the main entrance. Oh, at the main entrance? Yes. Okay. Um, we do not have a stop sign. But I know now that it's going to be up for discussion. It could be a sign now that says right only, but, but I, I wasn't sure should be, there be a stop sign at that point also. So. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll, uh, 
Okay. What's that? I said there isn't one at the IGA. No. Uh, so Caroline um, does not stop. stop. <laughs> right. Yeah, she just <laughs> blows right through there. Okay, just for consideration. But I've, I've yet to see someone not stop there. <laughs> 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 and um, was the lighting all within um, the foot candle limits on sheet number nine? I thought I saw a couple of them outside of the limit. Well, the, I believe the standard is um, no more than a half a foot candle. And most of, most of the levels along that property line are either zero or 0.1 or 0.2, I believe, is the highest. Let me just look at sheet nine, refresh my memory. Um, I think there's one spot where it's 0.6, but I think, Victoria, a street light, an existing street light is contributing to that. Is there, because um, I'm looking at 1.1 uh, and 0.07. Yeah. But that's, you think that's an existing one? Yeah, I, I, I've been looking at it, and I'll, I'll check it again. But, I mean, I can't, I don't feel like we can hold them to 0.5 if that's there's a town street light there. Okay, um, I didn't know. We'll, we'll double check that. Okay. And that was it. Anybody else? Just Carol Ann? I'll ask the question this time. Have you addressed all the AMIC comments? We have. Um, we've addressed all of them, and the plans have been revised. Um, there's only one that I have a question mark on, item number 14, um, and I've got to get back to AMIC, AMAC to <coughs> have them clarify that because uh, Detail 10 and detail 1 on sheet 4, it just doesn't match up. So there is something there that I need to have clarified. We'll clean that. Anyone else? Would someone like to make a motion for tabling and public hearing? Carol Ann? Motion for tabling and public hearing. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of KMC LLC for site plan review of C's Gourmet Market, a new retail office building to be located at 349 Ocean House Road, be tabled to the regular November 20, 2012 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Do I have a second? A second. Victoria, second? Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, that's five in favor and Joe abstaining. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you at the site walk. All right, we have one more. So Maureen, you want to, again, the site walk is October 23rd at, yes. at 5 p.m. Tuesday, October, and we will meet just right at, on the site. Yeah, I'll send an email reminder, and I also put it on the town's website calendar, so you can check that as well. Okay. And the public can check there as well. Great. So our other business on the agenda, our last item, survey zoning amendment. The town council has forwarded to the planning board a request to review an amendment to the zoning ordinance that would require a standard boundary survey for structures within five feet of a setback line, section 191013 zoning ordinance amendments. And we have a memorandum here that is also posted online that I think explains the uh, need for this provision. Um, would anyone like to raise any questions or discuss the proposal. I don't see any members of the public here anymore, so <laughs> we won't have a public comment period. Um, but we are required to have a public hearing, and that would be at our next meeting. So if there are members of the public who would like to comment, you will have the opportunity. Anyone on the board have any comments or discussion? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'm not for it, but I'm in the minority. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? 
Anyone want to make a motion? Sure. Carol Ann? A motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the draft amendment and the facts presented, the planning board tables the draft survey amendments to the regular November 20, 2012 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. We have a second. Victoria, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous, all of us. Thank you. That's the last item on our agenda. So a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? We stand adjourned. Thank you.